we see the story of Jesus going to the cross and everything seems to kind of be hand in hand. And then there's this one character that seems to interrupt the narrative. His name's Barabbas. We don't even know much about him except that he's a murderer, a leader of an insurrection, a rebel. And why he's even mentioned, sometimes I'm not so sure. It's like, what? Let's, this is about Jesus going to the cross. So in this moment, Pilate thinks, I hold the destinies of these two men in my hand. I know the Jews have a tradition that on a holy day, I will release one of the prisoners on death row. Pilate stands on this audacious stage who now presents Jesus, son of the living God, versus Barabbas, the thug and rebel. He says, all right, who do you want? This is blasphemy. This is, this has gone too far. There's no comparison. This is a rightful prisoner, a man who should be on death row. He's a rebel against Rome. He leads a rebellion. He murders people. He's a bad man. He's a thug and he's a crook. He deserves the chains and he deserves the crucifixion. Jesus, what has he done but heal, restore, deliver, set free, open blind eyes, open deaf ears, heal the lame and the leper. What, what has Jesus done? Who do you want? We, we want Barabbas. Yeah, give us Barabbas. When I look at the story, I realize who Barabbas really is. That's me. That's you. That's us. And I felt I was reading this the other day, and I felt God speak to me. I love Barabbas. I love him. But God, he's a bad man. I love him. And I wanted him to go free. But didn't you know that he probably would have never acknowledged the freak? Yep, yeah, but I love Barabbas. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his son for Barabbas. Even the one he knew would walk away from Jesus and his free gift and never come back. He loves them. And the nerve, the call, and the audacity of believers to think, I got saved by grace, but now that I'm in this deep, dark place of bondage, I better work hard to get myself out. What? That's the opposite of the gospel. Are you bound? Are you held under the power of this temptation, this sin, the sexual urges? Do you feel like it's controlling you? What are you going to do? I'm going to shake myself free. Stop it! No, you won't. You're no match for the powers of hell and the urges of sin and sexual temptation. You will not overcome it and you will never overcome it. You'll just be another statistic. There's no answer within yourself. Your own marriage, your own goodness, your own discipline, your own devotion will not save your marriage and will not save your kids. There's only one. And he's the one that took your place. He's the one that stood silently on the platform with Pilate and said, yes, let him have Barabbas. Take me. How many times have I stood on that platform with Pilate and Jesus and I'm the Barabbas and they start to take my chains off and I say, no, no, I deserve this. I deserve the guilt. I deserve the shame. I deserve the consequence. I deserve it. Jesus seems to look at me and say, no, son, let me have it. Let me have your sin. Let me have your pain. No, God, I did it to myself. I deserve it. My marriage won't make it. This is what I deserve. I deserve divorce. I deserve poverty. I deserve sickness. I deserve it all. No. I see him. I see him walking to the post to be whipped. As I stand a free man, all the attention is turned now. And I feel the love of God saying, go, son, live your life. I'll pay the price. Where did we get off thinking that we were going to 
set ourselves free. It's still Jesus. It'll always be Jesus. It'll never stop being the power of Jesus. If His blood is sufficient for your salvation, His blood is sufficient to sustain you through every challenge and every sin and every temptation. Jesus is enough!